Hi guys, this is the photo composite matte painting demo. And um, I started with a picture I took in Spain when I was uh, in traveling there. And I like to take a lot of pictures when I travel uh, for this reason, you know, for the purposes of this demo. And, you know, so I can gather reference photos for my own illustrations and things. And that's pretty much what um, a matte painting with you know photo composite or photo bashing is um, you use photos to sort of speed up the process of rendering detail and things like that but what I do is I, I make a photo collage of all sorts of different photos and then I paint over it sort of like what uh, Thomas Cole did with his Hudson River School paintings um, he did a bunch of different drawings of environments in the New York area upstate and then combine them and combine the best parts of every drawing to make something really fantastic. So what I am going to show you now is just all the different photos. You saw the first one. This is um, another photo and I'm going to use the, the little pool there in Monaco. Here's a photo in Greece at Mount Olympus. And um, I'm going to, I really want to use the background there, the, the mountain. And here's a, a photo uh, that I took in, in France of Carcassonne, of that castle city. So let's go back to this one. And uh, I really like the water in this one, so um, I might use the bridge as well. Probably not going to use the background. So what I'm going to do is just take that out. And what you can do is use the eraser tool, or you can just you know, use the marquee tool to select and delete. And then um, in order for me to see everything, I want to just lower the opacity. And this this process that I'm showing you now is, is very quick. The painting process, of course, takes longer. But this process of moving things around and snipping and cutting and clipping and putting things in place is a lot faster and a lot easier than the last part of the process. So what I'm going to do is, it's almost in place. I want the bridge to um, connect this cliff to that cliff. So what I'm going to do is I need a little more on that side. I could either crop it or just enlarge the photo. I'm going to press enter or return and then just you know, crop the photo. I crop the whole image and the whole canvas rather. So now I can see you know, both the image on top and the image under bottom on the bottom. It's sort of superimposed. Next, I'm going to take a a soft round brush and lower the opacity so I can sort of control how much I'm erasing. Let's lower it to about 50% here. And I'm just going to erase away what I don't want. I might take out that figure too. You don't have to put a figure into your piece. It's not required. But I do want to just take certain things out here with the eraser tool and it's great that you can control the eraser tool if you change the opacity like I did there so now I want to zoom in and I'm going to click the little eye just to see what's going on here so let me erase away this as well I want that little railing in there I'm gonna increase the opacity of the brush thereby increasing the strength then I want to make sure I don't erase too much. I'm probably just going to erase you know, what's that, whatever is down here so that I have a couple little strands that I can paint in of those you know, yellow grass tufts. So that's good enough for now. But up here, I'm just going to erase a little more so I can get rid of, you know, the, the hard edge. I want a little bit of, I don't want to erase too much. Probably going to keep all that there, and I'm just going to erase this. Let me zoom out a little bit. So I might want to actually keep some of that. Not this, but I like some of these little vines that are coming down. Let's zoom out and take a look at it. 
and it's looking pretty good. Now I can erase some of it and just sort of keep that original rock underneath. But I want I want some of these um, you know, ivies and vines. So let's bring the opacity back up, and you'll see that the scene completely changed. Now we have um, almost like a pond or a different body of water here, rather than a river running through these rocks. And we have a little bridge there as well. So we've completely changed um, almost like a quarter of the piece. And now we're going to take this. Maybe I'll move on to that. No, I'll save the castle for the end. Um, I'm going to take this mountain and try to fit it into the background. So that's the next step. So that's that. I'm going to click on that layer so we can start working with it. Probably going to erase everything under here. So I'm just going to bump up the opacity, get a bigger brush going, and just you know, erase all this. I don't need this. Probably not going to put those little buildings in there. I just want those mountains. So what I can do is, you know, maybe I don't want this mountain on the left. I'm going to delete that, erase that, and then maybe I want to keep this mountain too. I just want that one little mountain in the background that has it's sort of half covered by forest. So now I'm going to switch to hard round so I can be a little more accurate with what I erase and then go down to a lower opacity like a 40% and zoom in here and just you know, erase away those last little marks there then I can come back and you know paint things in and fix it up later that's good enough for now want to just erase a little bit more of this, but I like that green, so I'll leave it in. So now we have three different pieces in there. It's becoming more and more of a reference collage, a reference photo collage. The last thing I want to put in is somehow this, which is you know, the Carcassonne Castle. So I'm going to erase most of it and I just want I just want this little castle part and I probably I'm going to put it right here as sort of like a focal point or at least a background focal point maybe secondary so I'm gonna erase away what I don't need and what I could do is I could keep some of these trees and they have the lighting's very very similar so I don't want to erase that. I want to keep that. Maybe I'll make a duplicate layer of that. I could do I could approach it in several different ways. But now I can come back to that and use that um, tree little tree layer there. But I want to go back to this layer and just take out that castle. That's all I need there. So let's get rid of that for now. I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to erase the sky. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to move in there and get a tinier brush. Lower the opacity just a little bit. And start erasing away the sky. What you can also do is you can try to you know, select certain things with either the magic wand tool or the direct selection tool. And you can just delete them. And sometimes it's easy to do that, but a combination of the eraser and you know selecting what you don't want is usually a quick way to do it as well. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. Maybe I'll keep some of those trees and then just get rid of what I don't want over here. And you know, once I move it, I can erase things too. But let's move it up here. Let's see where it's going to go. When you move it, you often catch some, some spots you didn't erase. So that's what I'm going to do right here for now. And then I'm going to continue to move it up over 
to where it's supposed to be in my piece. So let's take a look at how it's viewed from afar. And maybe I can put something under here, like maybe more of those tree layers, or something like that. So what I'm going to do is go back to this copy layer that I made proactively so that I didn't have to you know, go back and undo everything and find it. I'm going to go back to that layer, which is back on copy two, and just bring those trees up there. So now I can just erase away the castle part, which I already have up there, and then I want to put them underneath the castle that I've placed previously. Bear in mind I'm going to paint over this, so let's move it up. And that can be somewhere like here. So now if I zoom out, I can possibly make like a duplicate of that layer just to save what I'm going to erase away now and go back to the layer I'm working with and just erase away this part. Let's get rid of that. And let's make it a little, opa little opaque so we don't erase too much. So let's see, let's erase this and go out right up to here where the cliff sort of ends. And we can see it through that opaque layer. So I'm just going to erase that. And then we'll turn the opacity back up and check it out. And now we have a little bit more of like a foundation underneath that castle. And what I can do is I can lower the opacity of that layer to make it look a little a little like more like it's further back to distance it to help it recede. I can do the same thing to this background copy of the castle so that they both look similar. And in order for both of them to really work together as two different layers, I'm going to just select both of them with shift, holding down shift and clicking um, on the second layer, and then just merging the layers. Now I can do the same thing, and they're both a little more transparent. So now they look like they're in the background. So that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to rotate it a little bit because it doesn't quite look like it's at the right angle. There we go. And then we'll check it once again. And now we have a little castle in the background which sort of balances out with this bridge because they, they almost both look like bridges even though they don't serve the same purpose. So now I have four different photos in my collage and now I can start you know, painting over it, adding things in, maybe I can add more of this in there. I could even add little details in as well to the collage before I start painting. So maybe I want some more trees down there. I lower the opacity a little bit and just plop that in before I start painting. I think that's going to be the last little piece of photo bashing I do before I start painting things and start simplifying. And again, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be photorealistic. You can do that. You can make it photorealistic, but this can be 
you know, painted over as a background for an animation that's a little more stylized or minimal, maybe more flat. Let's bring up the uh, opacity a little bit. There we go. So now we have more of like a you know, forest covered mountain over there, which leads up to the castle. So that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is first show, <coughs> excuse me, show you a little bit of the foreground um, where there's some little you know, pieces of grass. So I'm going to select my brush and we're going to start painting. And I'm going to try to make um, all of this look a lot more like, stylized, not as, not as realistic, not as photorealistic. So what I want to do is select that smaller brush and just sort of what I did for the last demo. When I was drawing the grass, just select that nice grass color and go in there on a new layer, which we'll call grass. Eventually I'm going to name all of these, but for the sake of speed in the demo, I'm just going to you know, go really quickly and show you what I can within the time constraints. So I got some little blades of grass there. I can lower the opacity to, look, to make them look more like the little grass strands that were in the original photo. And some of them had you know, a couple little seeds and things at the top. We want some over here. So this way, you know, you can already see that we're sort of making our own entire scene. And these are all photos that I've taken. You got to be very careful when you use um, photos online. You got to get the permission of the photographer. You got to make sure it's it's nice and legal. You don't want to steal anything. That's why I specifically decided to use my own photos because I don't want to encourage that. You don't want to get into any copyright infringement issues or deal with any of that. So take some of your own photos from your travels. We'll go out, go hiking, and take some photos there and start doing some photo compositing. So that's that's the grass, basically. Nice and easy. What we can do over here is focus on those cliffs where I wanted to keep some of those, those little vines and bushes and things from the Japanese garden. So um, what I can do is start working on the rocks and then show you a little bit of this. But um, I'm still going to be just painting over things. So what I'm doing is taking one color with the color picker or the eyedropper and just painting over this and just simplifying things. Painting over that part right there. Taking this color and then using that color to paint that there. And I'm just ba basically turning all of these textures back into shapes. Like this darkness right here, turning that into a little shape. Then taking this, where it's a little lighter, and turning that into a shape. But I'm making sure you know there's a clear light source. So I'm taking that dark, and then painting a sort of rock-like shape over here for that plane. Then taking this, and painting a maybe a little cleft or crack there for that plane. And then I'm taking this color, which is right next to it, and sort of you know, painting that in as well. So that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm just taking light values, painting them in, and then the dark values next to them, which indicate where the shadows are, and painting those in as well. And you want to change the rocks around too. They don't have to look exactly like the rocks from your photo. So now we have some great colors. We could even take you know, this color and put it up here as we paint over the, uh, the reference photo, which is sort of like built into our piece. Very convenient way to work. And we could take some of these colors and put, pour them back in there. Sort of cut into those shapes that we've already placed down there. 
then we can take some of this color and we can throw that in there too to make this a little brighter. But it's a little darker than what we first put down over there. So there's a progression from light to dark, from left to right. And we can continue to do that for a lot of these, these rocks here. A lot of the rocks, especially those that are close to the light source, which is coming from the left. We'll take some of those darker values down here. And closely observe the rocks. And then we can go over here and add a, a couple more of these values. Notice how this value is darker than that one. And it's on the left side of this object or this group of rocks that I'm painting. Then we can take that color and put it down here because it's facing away from the light source. Take more of that color and then this darker value, this darker color here. And just sort of, you know, feather it in. So let's look at it from far away. So now we have some rocks that are looking like, you know, a little less photorealistic, more like a painting, more like something that you see in an animation in the background. And the colors are better matching the colors up top on these rocks. Then what we can do is grab this color or we can make this a totally different color. Like maybe more like this, a warmer green, because this is a very very cool green. So I'm going to go back to the brush and make it a little lighter and start drawing in those those textures just like a stylized version of those textures you don't need every single little strand and frond of, of grass and moss or ivy or whatever it is but we want to keep some of those dark values underneath we want to make sure we're brushing or making marks in the direction of the reference where those little strands are growing. You see how they all radiate from the center. These go that way, these go this way, and those strands go that way, or vines, whatever they are. And then there's some that are down here that are a little thinner. I'm lighting up on the pressure of the hard round pressure size brush. And I'm just dragging in the other little pieces of ivy down to make a, a nice little transition. But I'm not going all the way down to the bottom because I want there to be a transition of value and some shadows at the bottom. So that you know it looks like it's going back into the, the water and away from the light source. So now it almost, you know, almost looks a little a little like a almost like a Dr. Seuss tree or a piece of grass. And you can do the same for these other objects. And then what you want to do is just bring the value up on the little color window to a lighter value and make some highlights. So you want to put those highlights in at the top of that growth there. On the sides because the light source is on the left and now we have almost four different values instead of just you know instead of just a simple one which would be too a little too flat so we can throw a little highlight or two in there and it'll really bring this out
So there, if I zoom out, you see we have a nice little you know, painted piece of grass there. And now what I did to the rocks and to the grass, that's you know, more or less what you're going to do to the rest of these objects here, these other trees, these other bushes, these other rocks. And up here, I mean, you don't have to stay too true to all the little cracks and wrinkles and things. And again, you're just going to go in there, select the color, and just you know, simplify. Just paint in that big, big, big plane of rock there. And then you're going to select this one, and maybe make a bigger brush, and paint in this plane over here. You can always go back in and add texture and detail by just clicking on the eye, looking underneath. But you don't want to add too much of it, because you don't want it to be too photorealistic. The point of this matte painting is to make it look like a painting. and You can try to make it photorealistic, but um, I don't recommend it for this specific assignment in this class. So then we take you know, some of this, we put a little of that there, then this color, which is like a bluish gray, we put some of that in there, and we continue to do this for every part of the rock. Take this and put that in there. So you'll have a ton of different colors. And that's the point of doing this. That's that's the great part about this. But you want you know some darker values in there. So you might take a, a little bit of this and go back in here and just maybe grab a low opacity brush or some sort of like chalk brush, for instance, and just go in there at low opacity and put in some texture. You can remember you can flip the brush. So I'm gonna flip the brush a little bit and lower the opacity even further. And then we can make some little stippled textures in there with a chalk or charcoal or pastel brush. And that'll give us some nice little textures so that the rock doesn't look completely flat. We don't want it to look entirely flat. We do want some cracks and things. So those will come back in there too. So we want to break things up a little bit, but it starts with those flat applications of color, like those that I added down here. And then you can come back in and sort of you know, add more textures and break them up and transition certain parts of those flat shapes into other shapes. And you can even go back in there and make some cracks and things. You start with a big brush, and then for the cracks, you use a, a little brush. So then I would just probably just clean up the castle, zoom in, you know, make sure there's no little little marks there that I don't want, and I would erase those. And I would continue to do the same thing I was doing to the rest of the piece, which is just, you know, color picking and painting. And adding things in, taking things out. And that's pretty much the process. There it is. So we're going to get rid of this. Hmm, doesn't seem to be working. It would help if I had the right layer selected. So, uh, just delete these, get rid of these, and so on. I'm not going to show you the deletion of all of them, but 
you get the idea. So if you zoom in, it's a lot easier, of course. You don't have to worry too much about messing something up. Or... So that's pretty much the idea. And the water is the same thing. You just take those flat colors. You had a little more green here. Same thing that I did here. The bridge, you can do the same thing too. You take some of those reds and paint them back in. You can even add some like torches and things to the bridge. You can extend these little poles up so that they're higher. You can increase the size of the bridge if you duplicate the layer and just take the bridge itself and expand it. But that's pretty much it. So make something really interesting. It doesn't have to be a castle. It doesn't have to be mountains. It can be like a desert. It can be like the, tre the Jordan Treasury. It can be a waterfall. Um, it can be a, like a science fiction background. It can be um, a background with, with a city. It can be some sort of um, like Grand Canyon mountain dwelling or something like that. So try something interesting. It could be any genre, but it should be at least you know, five to ten different images that you collage together and then paint over and then modify and add all sorts of interesting things too. And even little animals and creatures and things, but you don't have to add, again, figures or animals and creatures. It's, it's all about the background and the matte painting. So that's pretty much it. And I will see you next time.